Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I had a request to do a video on Edward Snowden. What are my general thoughts and my opinions on the situation of the story? Of course, this is big news right now because Edward Snowden's just now releasing his book on this topic and the government is suing to confiscate all proceeds on the book on the basis that he did not seek approval from the government before releasing it because he was a contractor. So I think he's probably going to lose the case. Now his argument and reason for that is what I was reading is that he said, you know, there's, there's nothing in it that's not already public knowledge. This is just a basic summary from his own viewpoint. He says that if they had ran it past them, they would not allow him to release it. So he just decided to release it. So they're going to confiscate all of the proceeds. I'm not completely sure Snowden cares. I think he cares more about the fact that it's out. Now, why are they not blocking the release? Because that would be against the First Amendment. <laughs> why do they care about the Constitution, though? So that's kind of the case. So my guess is he's probably going to lose the argument. He's probably going to lose the royalties of that particular book. I don't think he cares that much, but it begs that question. What do I, as a privacy security guy, think about this situation? And that was the nature of the question. And so I want to go back through and have a look at the Edward Snowden case. So from Business Insider, what we wanted to see is one year of the unprecedented top secret leaks. Now, understand this, as we'll go through this brief list, there is nothing that he leaked that would specifically compromise national security. Nothing. What he leaked is mostly surrounding the absolute unconstitutional actions of the government. So he released these articles through WikiLeaks. So he said, um, basically he released information that the NSA was collecting phone records from Verizon customers which is illegal. The government cannot collect stuff without a warrant. All right. They had a top secret court order, which was actually nothing more than a rubber stamp FISA court, which was never designed to do any of this type of stuff. This was baseless. It did not target anybody. It was just them collecting a bunch of data. Um, then the NSA accessed and collected data through back doors, through Google and Facebook and a variety of other companies called Prism. There's an 18 page presidential memo showing that Obama ordered intelligence officials to drop a list of overseas targets for cyber attacks. Um, that one's a questionable, uh, that deals, I don't know if that's necessarily national security, but it does definitely highlight the fact that, um, you know, the government is using a lot of these things. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to take a position on that one. Um, documents revealed NSA's boundless informant program, which gives the agency near real time ability to understand how much intelligence coverage there is in areas of a heat map. So where are people at? NSA was hacking computers in Hong Kong, mainland, mainland China, very few of which were military systems. And we're all complaining about Huawei. Uh, British uh, intelligence agency intercept phone and internet communications of foreign politicians. Um, this is actually a Five Eyes group. There's an excellent video from TechLore detailing the Five Eyes and things that you should watch if you want to understand that, sure, now the government doesn't necessarily spy on our own citizens, but what they'll do is they'll trade our data for the data from the five eyes so that all of the five eyes are going to watch the citizens. They'll just trade data. So they're not actually taking the data, but you know, uh, talk secret procedures that shows steps NSA must take to target and collect data from non us persons. How must minimize data, uh, collect on us citizens. So that's actually a good thing. Okay. This is like, Hey, we're trying to make a little bit of an effort. Uh, they looked at, um, uh, Tapping fiber optic cables to collect and store global email messages, Facebook posts, internet histories, calls, and shares the data with the NSA. So this is part of that five eyes discussion. The program called named Evil Olive that collects and stores large quantities of America's internet metadata, which contains only certain information about online content. Email metadata, for example, reveals the sender and recipient of addresses and time, but not the content or the message. So this is actually them collecting data on United States citizens. And then uh, until 2011, Obama administration permitted NSA's continued collection of vast amounts of Americans' email and internet metadata. 
under Bush's program called Stellar Wind. Government bugged offices of the European Union in New York, Washington, and Brussels. Government spies on at least 38 foreign embassies. NSA spies on millions of phone calls, emails, text messages of ordinary German citizens, which that's what they do. Um, <clears throat> using a program called Fairview, NSA intercepts internet calls of Brazilian citizens, monitoring stations set up in Australia and New Zealand to help feed data back to NSAs. So again, a lot of these international ones, this is what we expect them to be doing. It's only the places where they're doing it locally. So Snowden didn't just dump on what they're doing to the citizens. So in that respect, yeah, these are all things, though, that were all speculated. Okay, we can go through and I'll have these articles listed. These are all things that are speculated. People are saying, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Maybe I need to put on the, that's just a conspiracy theory. No, it's not, you know. And uh, Mr. AJ, their accent. The reality is, though, is that Snowden revealed actual constitutional violations of the government. And after these leaks came about, these surveillance programs were deemed by the courts to be illegal. So what was going on back before these leaks had occurred is that a, a court case came up and said that the government is collecting all of this data. And then the people said, well, we, we kind of know what's happening, but we really don't have evidence. And they asked the government in federal court and they said, we can neither confirm nor deny. And so the Supreme Court ruled that said that if this is really happening, yes, it is unconstitutional, but we don't have any evidence that this is happening. So we cannot make a ruling on it. And the case was dismissed. What Snowden did is he actually gave the real evidence that this was actually happened. So the case was reopened and deemed unconstitutional. So what he did is he exposed information that is unconstitutional. And the courts have actually deemed these surveillance programs to be unconstitutional. All right. So he basically gave us the solid facts, the solid evidence for what the conspiracy theorists were all saying was happening. But now we have the actual real evidence and those are no longer conspiracies, but hmm, reality. So it makes you go, huh, maybe we should give a little bit of credence to crazy people who talk weird and talk about water and frogs. So with that, he showed us why privacy is important. Okay. So what he did is he gave us he gave us a first time a real reason why we should take privacy seriously. Now, do we all take privacy as seriously as we probably should? No, I don't think we do. But should we take privacy as seriously? We absolutely should. And so what he introduces is this concept of turnkey government, or what it says in this article, turnkey tyranny. So this turnkey government, what this means is that while our current government or our current companies or our current whatever collects all this data and you say, well, I have nothing to hide, so I don't really care. The problem is, is this data is stored forever. And it's not necessarily a matter of is what you're doing wrong today, but is what you're doing going to be wrong when the next government takes over? in the next century, in the next decade. And the reality is we are starting to see turnkey tyranny occur, not on the governmental level, on the social level. I mean, think back to, was it James Gunn, I believe, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies who did a phenomenal job on these? He was deleted for a tweet that he said 15 years ago. Now, some of these tweets that we're getting drugged up from the past and thrown out in front of us, some of these things are just, they're just, some of them were wrong. Some of them were culturally acceptable at the time, but 10 years later, we have this crazy culture where we've lost our ever-loving minds. And what ends up happening is now people are actually suffering real world consequences for things that were culturally acceptable 10 years ago. And that is turnkey tyranny on a social level. Well, what happens when all of this data and the, the government rules retroactively against, let's say, Christianity? I'm a Christian. 
the government retroactively says Christianity is now illegal. Now they can go back through the entire back history of me being online talking about Christianity for 15 years. And I don't have anything I can do about it. See, first they came for the trade unionists. And I was not a trade unionist, so I said nothing. And then they came for the black people. I was not a black person, so I said nothing. Then they came for the Jewish people. I was not a Jewish person, so I said nothing. Now they're coming for me, and there is no one left to speak for me. That was a roundabout version of the quote that I don't have it exactly memorized, popularized by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a Christian in Nazi Germany who died for his faith because he stood up with a warning sign saying, guys, this is bad. Okay, this is turnkey tyranny, that all of this data collection can retroactively later on be used against you. And that is why I'm doing my privacy series. That is why it is so important that we protect as much data as we can. This is why I do not want to send health data to the cloud. This is why I do not want to send all of my preferences to the cloud. This is why I do not want to store all my contact information on someone else's cloud. Because this actually occurs. He gave us reasons for this. All right. <clears throat> he, of course, has some famous quotes. One of his be um, best ones uh, is looking. I had my thing out of order. Arguing you don't have a right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. Okay. Sometimes a scandal is not what law is broken, but what the law allows. These are just some quotes from him. Um, ultimately, though, the point of the matter is Edward Snowden gave us actual evidence for things that the government was doing was wrong. Now the Supreme Court has ruled that those things were wrong. What would happen if he just took his concerns to his superior? He would have disappeared into McGreedy's black bag and we would never have seen from him again. Okay. He would have disappeared. Nobody would have known the, the better. But he didn't. He instead decided to release the information, which information was used to retroactively say, yes, now we actually have evidence, yes, what you're doing is unconstitutional. And in theory, those programs have ended. Now, is Edward Snowden just running away and running away? No. From day one, he has offered to come back to the United States. He has one condition, and that is he wants to have a fair and open trial, which is his constitutional right as an American citizen. The things he exposed have already been demonstrated to be unconstitutional. The government has responded and said, if you come back, we promise not to torture you. Okay. The fact of the matter is, if he gets a fair public trial, which is his constitutional right, he will come back today. The government is refusing to give him his constitutional right so what do I think? What's my final thoughts? I think that Edward Snowden is a friend of the state. He has given us information that really woke up a lot of people to say, absolutely, absolutely, we have to take privacy seriously. It's not just, I'm not doing anything wrong, so I have nothing to hide. No. You may not be doing something wrong now, but what you're doing right now could be illegal in a decade from now, and then they'll come back for you. You don't want to say something on Twitter that is perfectly in alignment with modern reality to find that you lose your job 10 years later or worse, you disappear. We have to take privacy seriously. We have to protect ourselves from these companies because the companies give open access to the government for all this data. So I don't store any of my information on Google. I don't store anything on Facebook. I don't use these things as a private personal person. Yes, I have some business social media stuff. If you want to follow there, that just tells you when I post a new video and I might throw an article up there that I find. 
Okay, but the fact of the matter is I am not willing to give all of this data up to all of these companies. We lived perfectly fine in our society without connecting everything to the cloud, without connecting everything to the internet, and without giving all of this data to these companies. In my opinion, Edward Snowden is a hero. And I would ask the government to give him a fair public trial. He is willing to go to jail for what he released. That's fine. All he's saying is we need a public trial. And I can, he wants a jury of his peers to determine his guilt. And he will accept any consequence that comes from it. That's my thoughts on Edward Snowden. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.